Kia ora koutou and welcome to June Imperium in about three minutes. It has a solo mode. It's a game for one to four players, playing time is medium, and it's a moderately complex game. Arrakis, a bleak and barren world which should be a forgotten rock, if not for one thing. It is the only place in the universe that the spice melange is found. The spice extends life, grants mental powers, and allows for safe interstellar travel. The entire empire depends on spice, and those who control the spice control everything. Once one player reaches 10 victory points, it is the last round of the game. The winner is to play with the most points when that round ends. Deck building. You start the game with a hand of 10 basic cards and can get better ones. Card management. Most cards have multiple uses. Worker placement. You place workers in locations to get the associated benefit. Play a turn. Draw five cards. On your turn you will either play a card and place a worker or reveal all your remaining cards and end your turn. You can only place a worker in an area matching an icon on the card. This icon is green so you can use these spaces. Here are the blue spaces on the map and the yellow ones. When you use a card you also activate the ability in the grey band here. This one lets you use your leader's special ability. Some locations have a cost and you must pay that first. Here we sell three spice for eight money. You only start with two workers but can spend eight money here to unlock a third one. The faction locations on the side of the board can only be placed in if you have a character with a matching special symbol. Advance your cube on the track one step each time you place in a faction location. At step 3 you get a victory point and at step 5 you get the alliance token. You can lose this token if another player overtakes you. When you add a worker to a location with a cross sword symbol you can add troops to the conflict. The conflict is a special sub game and each round you are competing to have the highest score here. Each troop in the conflict is worth 2 points. Each player has a base where they store troops who are not currently committed to to the conflict. Some actions and locations will let you draw entry cards. Plot cards can be played on your turn, combat cards during conflict resolution with each sword adding one point to your score, and end game cards are revealed at final scoring. Once you run out of workers, reveal the rest of your hand. You can use the bonus as shown on the blue part of the card. Daggers are immediately added to your combat score. The blue numbers are used to buy new cards. Here we have four. If we had placed a token in the high council here, we would have six. The cost to buy a card is shown on the top right and you can buy multiple cards. You can also buy victory point cards if you can afford them. Once all players have revealed, play combat cards and resolve the current conflict. Some conflicts will let players take control of a region. Place a control marker there. You gain this bonus when anyone uses the location. You can lose control due to later conflicts. Finally, reset the conflict, remove all committed troops from the board, draw a new conflict card, place spice on areas that were not used, reclaim all workers, and start a new turn. Why would you like this game? Dune Imperium is a very tightly designed game with a lot of good decision points, and its combination of card play and worker placement makes for a compelling and interesting game. The conflict sub game is especially good and gives every round a special goal and a different feel. The entry cards add a degree of variance to the game that you might not normally expect in worker placement, and generally the cards you obtain allow for very different approaches and strategies to play out. What you buy and how you manage your hand is key. So this is really a game for people who want a good mix of mechanics to keep them thinking, but who don't want a game that's too complex. The best thing about this game is that there's no useless card. Anything you don't use to place workers can be used in the reveal phase. However, the theme is a tricky one here, as it's strong enough to make the worker placement spots make sense. But the game is incredibly bloodless and non-confrontational for a setting like Dune. It's a great game, but I don't think it's a great Dune game. Like deck building and worker placement? Try Lost Ruins of Arnak. And for a totally different experience, try Dune. June Imperium. Not spicy, just mild. If you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, subscribe to the channel, and come support us on Patreon.